In this example problem, we have an equation where copper 2 chloride reacts with two moles of sodium nitrate to form a mole of copper 2 nitrate and two moles of sodium chloride. And in the beginning of the reading of this problem, it may seem just like the ones we've done before. But let's again write down what we're given. We're given 15 grams of copper chloride. We're given 20 grams, that we have 20 grams of sodium nitrate. And we want to know how much many grams of sodium chloride are going to form. This can be tricky because where do we start? We have two givens. Whenever you see two reactant amounts of given, that's when you know you're going to need to first determine the limiting reagent. There are many different ways to determine the limiting reagent or limiting reactant. My favorite way is just by simply doing a what-if scenario. So what I say to myself is, what if copper chloride reacted completely? How many grams of sodium chloride would I get from that? To do this, this is a stoichiometry problem. What are the three steps? Step one, convert to a mole. Step two, do a mole to mole. Step three, convert from a mole. So let's tackle it one step at a time. 15 grams of copper chloride. And my ultimate goal is to figure out amount of sodium chloride as my product. So I'm going to start off with sodium, copper chloride, and for right now I'm just going to ignore sodium nitrate. I'm just going to pretend like it's not even there. What if I had 15 grams of copper chloride? Well, there's 134.45 grams of copper chloride in one mole of copper chloride. For every one mole of copper chloride, you get out two moles of sodium chloride and one mole of sodium chloride is going to have 59.44 grams. So based on this setup, I've converted from grams to mole, step one, mole to mole, step two, and mole to gram, step three. So here we are in our calculator. 15 divided by 134.45 times 2 times 59.44. And I get 13.3 grams. So that means if all of my 15 grams of copper chloride reacted, I would get 13.3 grams of sodium chloride. Oops. Incorrect subscript there. Now it's correct. Okay, so now let's take a look back at our other given, 20 grams of sodium nitrate. In this case, I'm going to ignore copper chloride and say to myself, what if 20 grams of sodium nitrate were to completely react? Well, if I have 23.99 grams of, or 20 grams, excuse me, of sodium nitrate, the first thing I'm going to do is try to figure out how many moles that is. I'm going to go through the process just like I did above. So I'm going to determine the molar mass of sodium nitrate. That would be 85 grams. Then I do my step two, mole to mole. For every two moles of sodium nitrate, I'm going to produce two moles of sodium chloride. Again, I'm going to my desired product, sodium chloride. I'll tell you why in just a minute. Then, as in the one above, I go from moles to grams. 59.44 grams of sodium chloride. 
When I figure this out, 20 divided by 85 times 2 divided by 2 times 59.44 will give me 13.99 grams of sodium chloride. So what I see here in this situation is if I reacted all my 15 grams of chloride, I get out 13.3 grams of sodium chloride. Reacting all of my sodium nitrate reactant will give me 13.99. I can make no more than the least. In other words, once this 15 grams of copper chloride is out, it is out. And the most I can produce is 13.3 grams of sodium chloride. That tells me that copper chloride is going to be my limiting reagent and sodium nitrate is going to be my excess. There's no way that I could get 13.99 grams because I don't have enough copper chloride. So what we see is think about no more than the least. You cannot produce more product than the least amount of product. Now I compare this if you think, want to think about it in terms analogy of sandwiches. For every peanut butter sandwich I make, I need two slices of bread and I need one tablespoon of peanut butter and that gives me one sandwich. If I had four loaves of bread, four slices of bread and an infinite, infinite amount of peanut butter, I can make two sandwiches. Three slices, uh, six slices of bread would give me three sandwiches. But let's say I'm running bare in my cabinets and I only have one tablespoon of peanut butter. Then I can only make one sandwich no matter how many slices of bread, bread I had. I could have five loaves of bread, but it wouldn't matter because I only had that one amount of peanut butter and it only allows me to make one sandwich. I can't make any more once that's gone. So the same thing applies up here. Once this copper chloride's gone, I cannot produce any more. The reason I like to do this as the way of method of solving limiting reagent problems is because not only do I get really good practice with stoichiometry setups, but I also answer my question, how many grams of sodium chloride would form already? I don't have to think about the limiting reagent and then solve it.